to the daily draw. Well, it's been a brilliant week. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Um, we are finishing the week today with, I love this picture, I really, really do. It's been, I love the King Julian from Madagascar. I don't know if you did that one. If you didn't, go back and do it. This one has got to be up there with me. I've loved designing it and I've loved drawing it myself and I hope you will too. We are going into the kitchen for Ratatouille. Grab your pencil and let's get drawing. <laughs> So today we've got Ratatouille and this was suggested to me by all four of my children. It's very rare that they all go, oh yeah, that'll be a good one. Uh, but they really thought that would be about our Ratatouille. So um, that's where we're going to finish. And um, it does look a little bit complicated. So I've put straight away the basic shapes we're going to start with. So you can see that. You can see we're really going to start with some very simple shapes here. And then we'll build it up to... Um, to this, how will we do that then, step by step? How does that turn into that? Well, you'll see. First of all, we'll smooth it all out and add some details. We'll finish there with the drawing. Then we'll go on to the painting. So I'm going to be painting here in my watercolour pad, which we've done. That's why we did the bow truckle and uh, Barry B. Benson and lots of others. This is where I've been doing them all. And you can paint on both sides. That is the really good thing. You can paint on both sides in these books. And these are available as part of our daily draw packs. And it's £15 for the amazing sketchbook, watercolour sketchbook, plus your watercolour pencils, brush, everything. It's a brilliant, brilliant pack. Um, so you can, um, that's, you can get that on our online shop at the Little Art School um, website. If you've not got watercolour paper, do not panic. You can do your ratatouille on any bit of paper and you can colour it in using anything that you can get your hands on. Um, but we are going to start here. I think I'm going to start here with that shape. Can you see this shape here? That f I feel like that shape holds together lots of the other shapes. So I'm going to take it across to there and I'm going to go here, just starting with a little line and a tiny curve down to there. And here, this is going to curve round like that. Can you see? So we've begun. And if you feel like that's a bit too wide, I feel like mine's a bit too wide, I'm going to come in slightly there like that. I'm going to get my rubber, which is all tucked away in my bag. Just, okay, just make sure you chop that bit. Get my rubber. There we go. So don't be afraid. If, they're, if the shapes aren't quite right of rubbing them out, I use my rubber all the time to make sure that I've got it right. And this, these steps here, we're going to now put in this, this um, semicircle there and another one there. So it's not a circle, it's a bit more oval-like, really, that shape. And that is going to form his nose. And it actually just peeks down a little bit there at the bottom. So we'll do that for his nose and then I'm going to come down and we'll put this really big shape in here. Can we see here? That one there. So I'm going to take my pencil from there. You see how loosely I'm holding it? Lovely loose grip here. Take your pencil down and go all the way down to there. And then I'm going to take it out in another curve to about there. That took me a few attempts to get that, so I'll just rub that out. And then I'm coming to the bottom corner. I'm going up a tiny bit. And I'm going to take that curve around there. This is going to, That's going to be his back. Now, I'm not sure I've got that quite long enough, so I may, what I may do is just come down a little bit, just another centimetre there. Oh, that's it, not even a centimetre, half a centimetre. And it's worth really taking your time at this step one. Even though they're simple shapes, it's these shapes we're going to build it on. And I will pause. I'll pause in a minute and you can catch up. So we're going to start from here, from this corner now. Take that out. Just up slightly to there. And then down. None of these are really straight lines. It's all quite curved, quite curved and bent. So let's put in the shape now for his hat. And I want to go from there, from about the middle of that line. I'm going to go out there with a line and here 
just a little bit up from the bottom. I've got another line there. Go in, neaten that up, and then I'm going to join those with a curve. So that's the start of his hat. So all we need to do now is think about getting this spoon shape in. And it's about thinking about putting the top of the spoon here. Let me see, we've got this little gap. So I'm going to go from here up and there. And then look at the shape within the shape there. So although the spoon, you feel like you should just do a big oval, it's not, it's quite a straight line, isn't it? Look, it mirrors that line there. Then it goes up. Then it curves. And from here, it's this side is much more of a kind of spoon shape. There. So we've got that there. Now, what I might do here is just take that so that's sticking out there slightly so we can imagine now that it's coming out there at exactly that point. And I'm going to take my line down to here. So that line in a nice straight line. And from there, down to there. If this feels really complex, just keep stopping. Looking really hard at the shapes now, because I'm going to pause it now, you'll be able to see. Look at it. Think about where the shape connects to another shape. Think about the space between spaces between the shapes. That's your checker, really, that you've got it right. Okay, so we'll pause now, and then we'll come back. It'll feel easy after this. Okay, so you can see here now that we've got quite a lot of red lines and the red lines are lines we are going to end up rubbing out. So what we'll do is we'll start with the spoon. Here's a very easy one. And we'll rub that little red line out. We don't need to do anything else to the spoon, that's finished. And I also want to rub out that little line there. Can you see that one in the nose? So the nose is finished. And I can also come in and take that line We'll keep this one, but we'll also take out that one. So lots of rubbing out at that bit. So we've got the, the, the spoon coming down. We've got his nose. What we're gonna do here is just put a little bit of fur in. And now let's just start here with the arm. So if you think of just all that is, is a straight line there and a straight line underneath parallel to it. But this second one comes down further. And then we've just got a few bits of fur, which will indicate where the top of the arm is coming around. Here, we'll keep that in for now, but we'll, at the next stage, we're just going to put fur there. We might as well do that now. We've got our fur in. And at the bottom, we've got fur in as well. And we've got these little feet coming out. Look, one, two, three. And another one there, one, two, three. So we've got two little feet. Then let's pop his tail in here around. And there. So that's his tail. Another bit of rubbing out here. And all we're doing on this one is where we've got a line. Let's make it into sort of jaggedy fur around. Now we can here, if we come to the top, we're going to take that line here and take it that shape. Can you see this shape here? We'll take that out and then we can rub out that line because this will come back in at the next stage. But from here, if I rub out there as well, everything in red is going to get rubbed out. We're just going to take these little lines down. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Mine weren't very evenly spaced. You could space yours out a little bit evenly. And that's all we're going to do. How easy was that stage compared to those first one, that first one of getting the shapes in? But you can see this character's just starting to come to life. So pause now, get that in, and then we'll come back and we'll put the final details in. Now, there's really not a great deal to do. But what we really need here is his little ear. I'm going to come out here, I'm going to go back into there and pop in his ear and I've got a little line there and then I can take down the hat so it touches in the top of the ear there. And here I'm going to come around, this is like the 
a, a kind of rim for the hat there that will go round. And I've got the ear. Then just take a little bit loose line for a bit of fur coming down to there. But what we know this, if you've been doing the daily draws and have done of the characters before, it's the eyes that really make the character come to life. And a lot of these Disney or Pixar animals are so hard to do, so hard for the, to do the eyes. You've really got to stop, not think, now I'm just going to put two eyes in and put two circles in. You have to really think about the shape of it. Um, and it's obvious, it's often not what you, your brain is saying, just draw an eye, just draw a circle, but it's really not. You get that shape in like that. So that's one. And now I'm going to think about the shapes between. So I've got that little line between them. They're quite close together. And then it comes down in one line and out. And then from here, from there, it's kind of up in an arch like that. To really think about that shape there. And then from there, we've got this extra bit coming round. From there, it's up, semicircle, like a, an archway almost. And from there, we've got the black and the little highlight in it as well. So all that's left is his mouth and whiskers now. So we've got that line coming down here and all you're doing underneath that line is going in with a second line and up and then a teeth two teeth one two and then at the bottom another shape and that's it for the mouth you see then pop in the whiskers and then his little hands holding and that is just one two three that'll give us one and then right here we're going up and then a curve. That's as if one finger. And then that's it. It joins. So really simple shapes there to make this idea of fingers and hands. And that is our Ratatouille. We're done. We are ready to paint. I am sticking with a really simple set of colours here. I've got my orange and brown. And that is going to be for the spoon, which I'm going to start with. So I'll just pop them there. And then I've got my blue, red and black, which are the red I'll use for pink. Now there's two reds in the watercolour pencil box. If you grab the box, can you see? Let me just get a bit of tester paper here and I'll show you the difference. I'll move my drawings out of the way. I'll get a bit of tester paper here. Just, that's just a bit of old watercolour paper that I'm going to use now. And let me show you the difference. So that is one red and that is the second red. They don't look too different there, do they? This is also a good demonstration of how the magic watercolour pencils work. But look, that's that red, very bright red, a red red. This is more of a crimson and like an alizarin crimson. Can you see how pink it is when the water's added to it? And it's that one you want. You want the pinky one. So test them out if you've got the box so you've got the right one. And we are going to start, let's start with the pink actually, on the nose and the ear and the tail and the feet, because we'll put that in and then it'll be um, almost dry. And look how, so I'll show you again. To get that, I went quite hard, but this way I'm going really lightly, hardly touching the paper. Let's show me, I'll show you what that's gonna get. That's the difference, a lovely light pink or a dark pink, depending how dark you or light you want this to go. So I'm going pretty lightly and all over the ear and I'm going to go in the tail and I'll just do that bit there at the bottom of the mouth. I'm going to come back and do his hands later because I want to do the spoon next. But as soon as I touch this, you see, we go, oh, lovely pink. Straight, honestly, they really, this is a magic, magic way to paint. They're fabulous. Let's do the nose. And coming round, a tiny bit on the mouth there. And then a the little tail, actually, we can put in the feet here whilst we're, whilst we're doing it. And I actually don't even need to get the paint and put it on. I can just lift it because there was so much paint on the mouth there. And put it on the feet. So that's the pink in. 
Now I'm going to take my brown and my orange pencils and I'm going to go round the edge to make this wooden spoon. So what I'm going to do is here, just going around the edge like that. Down here, around the hands, the side of them, and then all the way down to the bottom there. Now, just to get this idea of it being kind of like a wooden spoon, I'm just going to put a few bits in like that, little bits coming down. But then I'm going to take my orange, and I'm going to just colour it. It looks mess like really messy colouring, doesn't it? That's I, I'm not colouring here. I'm putting the paint pigment down so that when I take my brush, I don't want it to look orange. I want it to look, have this brownie feel to it, like a really nice wooden spoon. Can you see that? So even when I touch the paint on the outside, it's bringing that brown into the rest of the paint. I can do that here, there in between his little hands all the way down to the bottom. So that's us really mixing two colours there, mixing the brown at the edges to soften the orange. So it's not a bright orange, it's more of a wooden orange. We'll come back into there in a bit and we'll put something in. So now I want to go onto the um, hat here. And all I'm gonna do for the hat is I'm gonna go around it very lightly with my black pencil. And these little lines, I'm going to go around those as well. And what I want to get is the effect of it being slightly shadowed. To do that, because I don't want shadows all over, I want them kind of at the other side. Can you see that? It's really subtle. I'm just touching each of those black lines and it's lifting a little bit of the paint. But I do want more shadow on this side. So I'm just taking the paint from there and it's just making that shadowy. So that's his hat done. So now coming to the complexity of the fur, I had to really experiment for this because he's kind of a bluey gray. So what I've done here is I've used the, the, dark, the darker blue, like an ultramarine type style blue here like that but not too hard. So that's really hard. Let me show you what happens if I just turn that to blue. And you see, that's not really the color we wanted. It's really bright. So instead, I've kind of gone lighter in, in areas like this. And then I've added bits of black in where I've needed them. So look at that blue. And now, can you see the difference? So it's much more of a gray blue because it's got those bits in. And there are areas that I want them to be darker, like if I bring the picture in, under the arm and here between his little legs and, and just down that side too. So I'll put more black in. So I'm going to start here with some more, with some of the black. So I'm going to go like that for the fur at the edges. Do it here as well. And there, under the arms. top of the arm. That's about it. I might just put a little bit in like that. And then I'm going to take my blue very lightly and go over. And actually I'm going to get my other blue, my cerulean blue. It's like a much paler blue here. And I'm going to use that up at the top so we get this idea of a paler blue. And I'll take that bit in the middle as well. And then a little bit of darkness here to show the edges of the legs. Right, now we've got to be careful with our brush on this bit. What I'm going to do is start with the darker here. Because that's going to turn those bits grey. If I keep using my brush now, it'll just turn everything grey. So I'm going to clean my brush, 
Then I'm going to go into the blue. And it's from there, I'm going to take that grey up into the blue so I'm controlling it really. I'm going to come out and grab those bits of black and I'll take those up into it as well. So it's like we're lifting the black off and mixing it in with our blue. That's most of its body done. I'm going to come back in when it's dry with the black and use bits of it. There. Now let's go into this bit that's a paler blue. See, that's the difference. To make sure I've not got a line there. Really carefully painting around the eyes now. That's our fur done. So he's starting to come to life now, I feel. Just while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go in and put a bit of pink on these little hands and turn those. A tiny bit here on the outside of the eye. I've probably put a little bit too much. I'm not going to change that now. I'm not going to turn that. I'm going to take the brown and use the brown for the iris, like the eye colour there and around. And then taking my black to put in. Amazing. So as soon as his eye comes in, doesn't he? It just suddenly feels like he's coming to life a little bit, I think. And we've got a black bit here as well, so that those teeth really come out on the bit, black bit there. Right. Now I'm going to do this whilst it's still a bit wet, but just so that I can demonstrate to you. There to bring that really bring that mouth alive. Now whilst I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit more, I feel like it's still a bit wet. What I'm going to do here is just come in with my brown pencil and do that, just go over that a little bit so it really brings the idea of the spoon out. Then I'm gonna take the black, but I'm not doing a bold outline, I'm doing lots of broken lines here. Let's go around the nose to keep it nice and soft, especially for this fur. And here, and here, to show his arm off and his legs. He's got his little feet. Let's put in that hand and that hand there. We're going to go around the tail. You don't have to go around the tail. Or you could go around it with the red. I'm going to go around it like that. And then his ear has got like a little line inside. And that. I think that's him pretty much done, except for this little black line around the edge of the eye there. And that is our Ratatouille. Hope that you really enjoyed that. Now we are going to be back next week with a full week of lovely drawings that we've got planned for you. On Monday, we're going to be going back into the world of Roald Dahl. Uh, we've done quite a few Roald Dahls, but my, are they popular. Everybody seems to love them. So we're going to be doing the Girl with the Magic Finger on Monday. So get drawing all weekend. If it's wet and rainy, grab your pencils, grab some paper and just keep drawing. Every time you draw, you're getting better at it. So we will be back on Monday for more daily draws. We will see you then. Mm -hmm.